All right, here we go, the Algebra 2 review. Um, the first one, A plus B, I just took straight across right here. I did A plus B, just added every corresponding number, the 5 and the 1, the negative 4 and the 2, the 3 and the 0, the negative 1, negative 1. All I did. Number 2, 4A minus B, the first thing I did is I took, I did 4A. I multiplied matrix A up here by 4, every single number in there by 4. I got this new matrix right here. And then I brought B down and just subtracted straight across. 20 minus 1, negative 16 minus 2, 12 minus 0, negative 4 minus negative 3. 3 is just like 2. C plus 3D. I, I wrote C right here. I put 3D. I multiplied everything in matrix D by 3. Put it here. And then just added straight across like I did in 1 and 2. I saved number 4 because it's multiplication. Um, remember how we do this? We're going to go across and down. When I do that, I get 5 times 1 and negative four times zero. And then I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna go across down again, except this time I'm gonna cross down that way. So I get um, five times two, which is 10. Negative four times negative one is positive four. And then I'll go to the second row, and I'm going um, across down. So I get um, three times one, and negative one times zero. And then last of all, I have across down, which is 3 times 0, and negative 1 times negative 1. And all you do to finish up is just add those numbers up, and you get 5, 14, 3, 1. And that's it. All right, keep it rolling. Here, number 5 is a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 3. We were good to go there because these are the same. My answer is going to 2 by 3, so I went ahead and drew that right here. And the same method, I'm going to cross the first row and down the first column. I'll point that out one more time here. I'm going across the first row, down the first column. One times negative two is negative two, and two times two is four. I'm gonna add those in just a second. Now do this first row, second column. One times zero, two times negative one, which is negative two. Uh, third, third column, one times one, two times three, one plus six. Now I'm using the second row all the time. Zero times negative two and negative one times two. Get negative two. Zero times zero, negative one times negative one, zero plus one. And last row, last column, zero times one and negative one times three is negative three. Now I'm just gonna add those things together. Let's see if I can move it a little bit. Yep. And I'm gonna get, just add those up, two, negative two, seven, negative two, one, negative three. And there's your answer. Let's get the next one down here. Let's see. Next one says D times E. D times E, again, we're good because I have threes here. My answer is gonna be a two by three because that's my first number and last number. So I'm gonna draw a two by three again. Same thing I just had, a two by three. Okay, and this time I'm gonna go across, down. Then I'm gonna go across, down, and across, down. The difference is I'm gonna have three numbers this time. So here I go. One times one is one. Two times negative one is negative two, and one times two is two. Um, now I'm going second column. One times one, two times zero, and one times zero. And the last column, one times zero, two times negative one, and one times two. Now I'm going to my second row. So I got negative three times one, which is negative three, zero, times negative one, which is zero, negative two times two, which is negative four. Not a very really good zero right there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna erase that and do that one more time. That was kind of messy. Try to fit them all on this one screen. It may be too difficult. Negative three times one is negative three, zero times negative one, negative two times two, negative four. That's not much better. Um, second column, negative three times one, negative three, zero times zero, and negative two times zero. I like that one, bunch of zeros. And the last column, negative three times zero, <clears throat> zero times negative one, and negative two times negative two, negative four. Move that over, write our answer down here. Let's see here, if I add those up, I'm gonna get one, one, zero, <clears throat> and negative seven, negative three, <clears throat> and negative four. And there's that one. All right. Um, let's go to number seven. Number seven says determinant. To the determinant, I've already written the first two columns out there. And don't forget the steps we're gonna use. I'm gonna go 
down this way, that way, that way, diagonal. So I'm going to do that first. 1 times 0 times 2 is 0. Um, 0. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. My marker today is negative 2. Um, 0 times negative 1 times 0 is 0. Then I've got to take and go this direction. I've got to go diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. And I'll get um, multiply again, except this time I'm subtracting negative 2, 0, 0. Uh, that gives me negative 2 minus negative 2, which is 0. So the whole thing is 0. Number 8. Let me scoot this up a little bit. Number, oh, I can't do it. Number 8 um, says 2AC. What I went ahead and did, I went ahead and did the 2A. So I multiplied everything in matrix A up here by 2. Actually, I didn't do that yet. Um, so I guess I'll wait till the end. I thought I did with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and multiply A times C. But if you want to, you can multiply um, the 2 times the A first. I'm just going to save it for a second. So I'm going to, I'm going to go across down uh, negative 10 plus negative 8 and 0 plus negative 4. Let me start this again. I'm sorry. It's just too messy. Um, I'm going to pull it way up since I already have it written down. There we go. All right, now that's better. All right, I'm gonna get a two by three again. Third time I've gotten one of these. And I'm gonna cross down five times negative two. Um, negative four times two is negative eight. Now second column, five times zero, negative four times negative one. Five times one, third column, negative four times three, negative 12. Second row now, 3 times negative 2, and negative 1 times 2. Uh, 3 times 0, negative 1 times 1. And last column, 3 times 1, negative 1 times 3, it's negative 3, so I get this right here. I get negative 18, 4, negative 7, negative 8, 1, and 0. However, don't forget that 2. So what I've got to do is go to the scalar. I've got to multiply everything in there by 2 which is gonna give me negative 36, eight, negative 14, negative 16, two, and zero. All right, there's the first eight. That'll be the messiest part of this, I promise. There's just so much there. All right, number nine is just a matrix equation. Anytime you have two matrices equal to each other, every single number must be the same. Like the negative ones are the same, and the fives are the same, which tells me that three X has to equal negative 18. And if that's the case, x must be negative 6. That's supposed to be a 6, my poor stylus. Negative 6. All right. Now, it also tells me this 2y right here has to equal negative 4. So I'm going to say 2y is negative 4, which means my y is negative 2. Okay, let's go to the second one here. Um, Got to work this one out a little bit first. Multiply the first one by 2, which is 16, negative 2x, 10, 12, Minus this one, 3, negative 9, 10, negative 4y. And it equals this. It equals the 13, the 4, the 0, and the 16. So let's do our subtraction. 16 minus 3 is 13. Negative 2x minus negative 9 is the same thing as negative 2x plus 9. 10 minus 10 is 0. 12 minus negative 4y is 12 plus 4y. And it still equals this one, 13, 4, 0, 16. So what that tells me is um, this right here, the negative 2x plus 9 has to equal the 4 and also tells me the 12 plus 4y has to equal the 16. So I'm going to work both those out. I'll move the 9 over. That gives me negative 5. Divide both sides by negative 2, you get 5 halves. This one, move the 12 over, you get 4. Divide by 4, you get 1, and there's your x and y. All you got to do on those. Okay, we got 2 by 2 determinants. One of the easiest things on here. Anytime you have 2 determinants, all we're going to do is multiply this diagonal, multiply that diagonal, and subtract. Just make sure you do that order. So this first one, 7 times 3 is 21. 1 times 0 is 0. That's just 21. That's all there is to it. Second one, do the same thing. 1 times 6 is 6. Negative 6 times, sorry. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Subtract. That's 12. All there is to those. All right, when you have 3 by 3s, you can do your diagonals. I've already written the columns out there to make it a little shorter for us. So what I'm doing first is I'm going to go diagonally this direction. 
and multiply all those numbers and add them up. So like one times negative eight times three is negative 24. Two times one times two is four. Three times five times four is 60. Add those. Then I'm gonna go the other direction and multiply these and subtract those though. So two times, I think that was a five, 10 times three is minus 30, um, minus four and minus negative 48. So I'm gonna add all those up. Uh, negative 20 plus 60 is 40, 10, six plus 40, I believe that's 54. I didn't punch that in my calculator, you might wanna double check me there, but just add them up. All right, the second one, I can do the, exactly the same thing. Recopy the first column out here. Recopy the second column, do not recopy the third. And I'm going diagonal again. One times two times three, six. Two times zero times negative one. Three times zero times four. That's going to the right. Now I'm gonna go backwards. Minus two times zero times three. Minus one times zero times four. Minus three times two times negative one. So I get a six. Really six plus six right there. That's 12. And those are three by three determinants. That's all you do. All right, for area of the triangle problems, I've already set it up. You do it one half in the front. And every point, every point goes in your matrix. And remember your last column is all ones, all ones. So I'm gonna work it like I did the last two. I'm gonna rewrite the first column out here and the second column out here. Don't forget your one half. And remember area must be positive also. So I'm gonna do my diagonals. One times six times one. Five times one times seven. One times four times three. Going that way. Now I'm going the other way. Five times four times one. One times one times three. One times six times seven. And I'm gonna add those numbers up. 45, 53, 33, 30. Um, I think it's negative 12 right there. One half of negative 12 is negative six, but don't forget you need to take the absolute value of your answer because the area must be positive. So the area is six. Let's try the number 16 here. Same steps. Uh, rewrite the first column out here. Rewrite the second column. If you, you need to be able to do the scale, I'm, I'm assuming. So one half. Do your diagonals, five times three times one, four times one times eight, one times six times negative one. Then go the other way, minus 24, minus negative five, minus 24. All right, let's add those up. 40, let's see, 47, 41, 17, 22. I think that's negative two. Took one more time, 47, 41. Um, 17, 20, I think that's right. Half a negative two is negative one, but remember you must do absolute value of it, so I get positive one. Does this say you can use your calculator on that, which means you can do the button that says DET on your calculator. All right, Cramer's rule. Remember, when you're looking for the X, don't use the X on the top. Instead of using the X, I'm gonna use the negative one and negative three. I'm using those two numbers in the X's spot. You can use the Y's. On the bottom, you always go X, Y. Cut that backwards, sorry. You go X, Y, X, Y. And now you just use your determinant. Multiply the first diagonal, multiply the second diagonal. You always subtract, you get negative 20 there. On the bottom, multiply the first diagonal, multiply the second diagonal, you always subtract, that's negative five. So you get four, that's your X, core, your X value. You have to get your Y. A little bit less work because you've already done the bottom. The bottom is negative five, so you can reuse that. The top, you're looking for Y, don't use the Y. Use those numbers in the Y's plot. So I'm gonna do one, negative two. And I'm putting these two numbers where the Y's would go. Work that out and multiply your first diagonal, multiply your second diagonal, you always subtract. That's gonna be negative five over negative five, which is one. So your answer to that one is four, one. And it's worth it to plug it in. Just make sure it works. I'm gonna erase that one. Go to the second one. All right, gonna be the same type problem. Kramer's rule again. If you're looking for X, don't use the X on the top. Use the one and the negative six instead. Your Y's are okay. And the bottom is always X, Y, X, Y. Do your first diagonal, negative seven. Second diagonal, negative 12. You always subtract. That's gonna be five. On the bottom, first diagonal, second diagonal. Always subtract. So I get negative five for my X. For your Y, remember the bottom's already worked out. We got negative one on the bottom. On the top, when you're looking for Y, don't use the Y. Use these two numbers instead, but do use your X's and make sure you're in your X, the spot where the X's would go. 
do your first diagonal, your second diagonal, you always subtract. If you subtract right there, you get negative 3 over negative 1, which is positive 3. So the answer should be negative 5 and 3. And looks like it works pretty good. Check your answer. All right, these two say use the inverse matrix to solve the system. I already set the first one up. Y'all were not having any trouble setting these up. What I've got to do is I need to move the inverse of this one over to the other side. So I'm going to find the inverse first. I'm going to remember how we do that. You find a determinant, which means you multiply, you multiply, you subtract, and you get one. You flip it. If you flip one, it's still one. So one goes there. We don't even have to put that really. Switch places with your first and fourth number. Uh, switch signs on your second and third number. And then multiply by what's already over here, the 2, 2. So you do have to know how to multiply. That's the bad thing. All right, so you go, here we go again. We did this already. We're going to cross down. A negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 2 times 2 is 4. You always add those, so it gives you 2. Um, cross down again. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Always add. That's 2. So my answer should be 2, 2. All there is to it. Let's erase that one. Do the second one. Oops, part of it didn't disappear. There we go. We'll move it over a little bit. Same steps. Um, set up your equation. 5, 3, 2, 2. Your second matrix will have your variables in it. Your third equation, your constants in it. Again, got to move that one over. Got to move the inverse over. So I'm going to find the determinant first. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6. That's 4. Don't forget what we're going to move. We're going to flip the 4, make it 1 fourth, switch places with my first two, first and fourth, switch signs on the other two. Going to multiply that times 4, 8, that matrix right there. Now, this time is a little bit different. You do have the 1 fourth in the front. Now I'm going to go across down. 2 times 4 is 8, and negative 24. That's going to be negative 16. Now do the second row. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. 5 times 8 is 40. That's 32. Now for your answer, you need to take a fourth of those. A fourth of negative 16 is negative 4. A fourth of 32 is 8. And you can check those by plugging them back in. All right, I'm going to do my best to talk you through this one. Um, the 3 by 3 on a calculator, the big matrix. So what I did first is I just wrote a matrix equation. And... To use the calculator, this right here is going to be my matrix A. So if you can, I don't know if you can see this or not. I took my calculator, this one right here is the big picture, and I took it and made a three by three of that matrix right there. Then I need to move it over here, the inverse of it, to multiply by the matrix that's over there. So the next thing I did is I took uh, the the matrix right here, the little three by one, and put it in the calculator, and it looks like this. If you can see that better. So then what I have to do to finish is I need to multiply the inverse of matrix A times matrix B, which is what I did on this screen. There's, there's the inverse. That little X negative 1 button is your inverse times matrix B. Hit enter, and I got those answers. Now, I wasn't sure those answers kind of looked funny to me. So what I decided to do is test it out. So what I did, the second part of what you see on the calculator screen, I took those answers that I got, the 12.5, the 20.5, and the negative 37, and I plugged them in this top equation up here to see if I would get negative 12, and I did. So I know for a fact that those answers right there are perfect. All right, I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. The calculator steps are not hard, but you gotta, you know, if I were you watching this video, I'd plug those in and make sure I can do that on the calculator. All right, this one, the teacher's buying supplies for two art classes. For class one, the teacher buys 24 tubes of paint, 12 brushes, 17 canvases. Class two buys 20 tubes of paint, 14 brushes, and 15 canvases. Each tube of paint costs $3.35, brush costs $1.75, and each canvas costs $4.50. Write an inventory matrix, that means what she bought, what's in her inventory, which I did right here, 24, those are all the numbers that she bought. And a cost per item matrix, which I did right here, a matrix which sent $3.35, $1.75, $4.50. Now, all you got to do to get these the total for each class is do your matrix multiplication because when you're going to go across down, that's going to do the whole first row, the whole first class times the cost of each item, and the second row, the whole across down again. And I wrote them out by hand down here, but it also says up here on the top. I don't know if you notice this. You can use a calculator. So I'm going to show you next exactly how to punch that in. See if it makes sense to you. Okay, all of a sudden some pictures appear of calculator steps on your video, but here's what happened. 
I made matrix A, the first matrix. I made matrix B, the second matrix with those numbers in them. And then what I did, I second quit, obviously, after I got those in there. And then I just came back to the main screen and did like second matrix A times second matrix B. And it gave me the matrix there, which is the answer matrix, which is right there, 177.9 and 159. Just remember they are money. Um, and it's not all this too. You can do that on a calculator completely. So I hope that helped a little bit. All right, last one here. Ice Cream Shop sells the following sizes of ice cream cones. Single for 90 double for $1.20, triple scoop for $1.60. One day, a total of 120 cones are sold for $134. As many single scoop cones are sold as double and triple scoops combined. Write a matrix equation to represent the problem. Then determine how many of each type of cone using an inverse matrix and your calculator. So first step was the first equation, no money. Single plus double plus triple, and they sold 120 of them. That's right there. Next, put the money in. 90 cents, $1.20 for double, $1.60 for a triple. All together, they made $134, which is right there. Now, the third equation is the last part of the sentence. As many single scoops are sold as double and triple combined, which means the single is going to equal if you combine the double and the triples. So what I did to make all the variables on the same side is I moved the D and T over to the other side, so I'd have this equation right there. So those are my three equations which means my system, my matrix equation is going to look like this. It's going to have your coefficients, then your variables, and then your constants on the other side. Once I got there, I turned it over to the calculator. The first thing I did was I made a 3 by 3 of that first matrix, which looks like that. I did a 3 by 1 of the answer matrix, which looks like that, 120, 34, and 0. And then to get my answer, remember, you got to take the inverse of the first one, over to the other side and multiply it by your second one. So I did that right here. Took my inverse of A, multiplied it times B, and I got 60, 40, 20. And what that tells me is my final answer is that they got 60, they sold 60 single scoops, uh, 40 double scoops, and 20 triple scoops. If you add those up, you'll get 120. And if you add the prices, you get 134. Works out perfect. Hope this video helps you some. Um, I'll be at school early in the morning. Also have A and B free. If you need me, please come see me, and I'll help you as much as I can. See you tomorrow. Hope you do good. See ya.